Hey everyone, happy new year. I hope that the year is off to a great start for you. As you can tell by the scrubs, I'm actually back in medical school, just finished the first week of my surgery clerkship, which was amazing. Um, I wanted to try something new here. So I usually don't produce content like this, but uh, a few weeks ago, I shared my, I reshared my seed habits article about building new habits and stacking those habits. And one of the habits I'm working on uh, this year, or at least this quarter, is to start producing more content and sharing it with uh, my friends, my acquaintances, my broader network. And I have three goals in doing this. The first is it's sort of like a video journal. It's a forcing function that takes, makes me deliberately reflect on what I'm learning, what I'm seeing in medical school, because it's a pretty awesome opportunity and I don't wanna waste it. So I wanna take the time to go back review what patients I've seen, what surgeries I've been in, and share some of those learnings, if, if at a minimum, just for me or my parents or family, uh, but maybe for some of you if it's useful. The second is to find bite-sized opportunities to connect with many of you, my friends, my acquaintances, my broader network, and it's been great. Already I've been posting a lot of different types of text-based content. It's been really great to hear from people I hadn't heard from in a long time um, who may have ideas and thoughts uh, things that we can exchange and make something even better as a result. So that's the second reason. And the third, it's a forcing function for me to try something new, get out of my comfort zone and learn how to use new tools like um, Vizard.ai, which is a AI video editing tool, um, or Taplio and TweetHunter, which I've been using to schedule posts just because uh, things are so busy in school. But what this is not is, even though I'm wearing scrubs, uh, I'm a medical student, so this is not medical advice, right? So anything I share here is just stuff I've seen or learned. It's not supposed to be for your own diagnosis or treatment. Um, certainly go see uh, your qualified healthcare professional for any of that. And the second is it's not a high production value, right? It's just filmed on my phone. Uh, I spent the last several years uh, helping create Osmosis, which uh, produced thousands of very high quality medical education and healthcare videos. Um, this is not the same thing. This is just sort of, I just got out and I'm taking a couple of minutes while I'm on my treadmill desk to reflect on some of my experiences. So with that, those caveats in mind, I just want to take the time on uh, today's video to share three things I learned this week that could be interesting to some of you. The first is, um, you know, this is actually a reflection, not just from my surgery clerkship, but from psych neuro before that I've met a lot of patients and, um, I've been really impressed with the patients, family members and, and other loved ones who take the time to go to the visits with them or stay, stay in the hospital with them if possible. Um, even yesterday in clinic, I had two patients who they couldn't bring their families, but they dialed them in. Uh, one who had pancreatic cancer dialed his uncle in to be able to talk and, and listen and ask questions as well. And I think it's really important that since all of us are patients in some form or the other, it's really important to have those advocates to bring those people to your uh, clinic appointments, uh, and maybe even to record the conversation you're having with your healthcare professional, just because the 15 or 20 or 30 minutes you're getting with your provider goes by really quick. And a lot of stuff is discussed, especially yesterday in clinic. There were so many people who were getting new or, or follow-up um, appointments regarding their pancreatic cancer or hepatic cancer, that it was really important for them to have someone else in the room listening or recording so they could go back and review what they learned uh, since those are really um, difficult diagnoses. The second thing I wanna reflect on is, uh, it's kind of sounds kind of random, but I think it's something all of us can do. Um, it's called scleral icterus. So you probably know the sclera are the whites of your eyes. And there's this compound within us called bilirubin that can get backed up and accumulate in the, in the blood. Um, normally you have less than one milligram per deciliter of bilirubin, but if you get to levels of over three milligrams per deciliter, uh, you can start seeing yellowing of the eyes, which is indicative of jaundice. And there's a lot of causes for jaundice, a lot of things it could be, um, everything from uh, hepatitis and cirrhosis to just a normal part, uh, people who get pregnant uh, may get jaundice, to something a little more worrisome like pancreatic cancer. And so I think it's kind of an easy way uh, for us to pay attention to our own health, just like our weight, our blood pressure, our pulse, um, just making sure you're aware of you know what's happening in your body. If there's a new mole, if your eyes are starting to yellow uh, or your friend's eyes are starting to yellow, just something to point out and maybe think about because the sooner you can catch those kind of things, the sooner we can intervene 
and uh, make a difference in someone's care. Just the third thing I'll share, this is super random. It's called a high yield fact, mostly because I've been studying for the shelf using osmosis and um, uh, different other resources, but primarily osmosis and Elsevier products. Um, this is something that's come up in a bunch of questions uh, for the USMLE shelf or step two exam, that if you do a serum blood culture and you find budding yeast, which is like a candidial infection primarily, uh, you never consider it as a potential contaminant. You always begin empiric antifungal therapy. Uh, sometimes that can happen because you have a central line and that gets infected. Um, so again, for those who aren't in medicine or are starting for the test, that's gonna be super random, but just something that I wanted to share because it's helping me re learn and retain that information. So anyways, that's it for now. Sorry, this is already a six, seven minute video. That's a bit longer than I'd like to make for these. But um, hopefully, uh, if you have any feedback, send me a, a DM or a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from many of you. And again, one of the main goals of why I'm releasing content like this is to provide a bite-sized opportunity for uh, you to connect with me, um, because I'd love to uh, build those relationships and, and foster them and learn together and exchange ideas. So have a good rest of your weekend, all right? Take care.